Hello, welcome to today's marketing show. We've got a very interesting guest today, former pro athlete, New York Times bestselling author, and the founder and CEO of, let me get this straight, what, what is the title? Healthpreneur, is that correct? You got it. Great, great title there, Yuri. Um, you know, we asked Yuri to come on today because he's got a very hot topic right now. I think you can relate to if you're a business leader or maybe you run a division, you're a manager of something. We're going to talk about why complexity is the greatest enemy of growth, both in your business and your life. So Yuri, thanks a lot for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rick. I'm excited to be here and share whatever I can in our time here. Well, I, I think, you know, as business leaders, complexity is certainly, uh, you know, a headwind we face every day. And as you talk about and you've written about, you know, maybe talk to us about why you think this is an enemy and how people may be able to overcome it. Yeah, I think it's it comes down to a bandwidth uh, issue and bandwidth in the, in the context, not so much of time, but of attention. And I think, you know, a lot of us talk about time management, but I really think it's attention and focus management. And again, everyone's in a bit of a different situation. So if you're like a solo partner versus someone with a big team, what you're doing with your time and attention obviously is going to vary. But I think in general, the less we do, the better we can do at that thing. So if we try, it's like trying to be a jack of all trades, we end up being a master of none versus being a specialist in one specific domain, we become a lot more effective, efficient, et cetera. But if we take that same approach to the different projects, tasks, areas of focus in our business, the same thing applies. Because in my first business, which was uh, in the online health and fitness space, you know, we grew to very, uh, a very, very high level. And we helped half a million customers around the world, but it was massively complex. We had more than 100 funnels, dozens upon dozens of SKUs, and all of the processes in the business were for the most part, kind of unnecessary because it, like in any business, we're going to have 80, 20, right? There's going to be 80%, 20% of stuff that's going to produce 80% of results. Mm -hmm. And I think the job of a leader is to look at your business or any, any aspect of your life and say, are we doing the right things as opposed to, are we doing right uh, things right, rightly, right? Correctly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the difference between great leaders, part of it, you know, great leaders and, and those who maybe don't have that same type of insight. I think Steve Jobs is a great example of this. When he came back to Apple, he killed everything. And he said, we're only going to focus on this product and this product. I think it was a handful of products that they were going to focus on after he came back into the company because up until that point, they started diversifying. They started doing all sorts of things and nothing was really working. And he came back in and just took the reins and said, we're going to cut everything and focus on this and this, and that's it. And I think that's very hard to do for a lot of businesses, but the reality is that you can do more by doing less, just based on focusing on one or two things that you can do extremely well, as opposed to like trying to be everywhere all the time, doing everything. And I think that's kind of challenging nowadays, especially if we think from a marketing perspective, like I got to be on LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Google, YouTube. It's ridiculous. I mean, I understand it, but it's it's... It's very challenging to do that unless you have a massive team and a big budget behind you to support that. And even then, it might be unnecessary, at least in the short term. So, you know, you mentioned a couple of great points there. Simplicity, you know, Steve Jobs, uh, one of his quotes that I really like is simplicity is the ultimate in elegance. And anyone who's looked at you know, his presentations, he was the direct opposite of those busy slides with a bazillion totally. words on them. It was like just a simple point yeah. or a graphic. And then, you know, getting back to kind of that 80% that works is a hamburger chain I love to go to uh, in the southern part of the U.S. Uh, and their menu is so simple. It's like either you want a hamburger, hamburger and fries, or you want a, a soda for you Americans or pop for us Canadians. But I guess the question is, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm running a business too. We're a, a, an outsourced marketing agency, sales training business. Things are always changing, right? And so we become a victim, if I can call it that, of we got to make sure we feel like anyway, we got to be into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And, you know, adding another skew, as you mentioned. So, you know, simplicities, I think, you know, people understand the concept, but I don't think they know how to get there. And you've helped a ton of businesses, I think, simplify. So I'm wondering, how do people kind of simplify their business and ultimately their life? So I, I, going back to Steve Jobs, talk about simplification. He wore the same thing every day. 
like just talking about decision fatigue of what we're choosing to wear. He's like, I'm not doing this. I'm just going to wear the same thing every single day. Little things that that make a huge difference personally, and obviously trickles over into business. But I think the first thing that business owners uh, is helpful to do is really identify what your business model is. So if you like, I, I suggest to anyone is like, you should be able to draw out how you generate leads, how you convert them into customers or clients, and how you deliver results to them on the back end. And it should very, it should be like it's a flywheel, as some people call, or a very linear process. And if you can't map that out, chances are your business model is too complex to begin with. And it's a good exercise to really think through because number one, I don't think a lot of times we really think about that. So just the fact that we're thinking about it forces us to articulate it. And then as we're doing that, we might be like, man. I don't even know what I'm doing here, where I have so many things on the front end or all these different things on the back end. And I don't know if I have a business model. Like a lot of, I mean, our clients are health professionals. So I, I say that a lot of them, especially in a clinical setting, brick and mortar become successful in spite of themselves because their business model is I lease space, people walk down the street and walk in. Mm -hmm. That's not a business model in no. my mind, right? Yeah. So when you start to identify that, you're like, well, how do I simplify that? I, I can't even simplify what I'm not even aware of. So the first thing is to identify what that business model is. Like, so in our case, we have a very simple business model. We call it the perfect client pipeline. It's a traffic source. In our case, it's Facebook ads. Comes into a webinar, an online presentation that does most of the selling, if you will, or the pre-indoctrination. From there, we invite the right people to book in a, a call with one of our enrollment coaches. And if there's a mutual fit, we move them to the next step which is to enroll with us. How we deliver results to them is exactly our own business model. So we actually teach our clients the very four-step model I just mentioned to you. We do nothing else with them. There's no like post on TikTok and post on Instagram. It's like, you're going to dial these four steps in and there's tiny little nuances to make it all work. And I think where a lot of businesses go wrong is by spreading themselves too wide, they're not able to go deep and focus vertically to really master those nuances because in my experience, and I've been doing this now for close to 20 years, it, success in business, it's not about doing new. It's not about introducing new stuff all the time. It's about doing more and doing better. So more of the same stuff that's working and then constantly making small improvements to that business model or that flywheel so that it becomes a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective. And that's how you build a great business. So First step is to identify the business model. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. And then do your best to clarify what that looks like. And then from there, you look at, well, what is, where's the fat on here? Do we really have to do this or can we get rid of it? We killed two product lines, coaching offers uh, two years ago because we realized number one, they were not congruent with our philosophy. And number two, in one case, uh, we just realized we weren't in a position to deliver the results that we wanted to for our clients. And so we looked at how much time and energy it was taking for our team to deliver, at least on one of these. And we're like, this is the juice is just not worth the squeeze. Mm -hmm. And if you're still stuck on that, just look at your PL. Look at where the revenue is coming from. Where, you know, what are the costs of goods sold in various product deliveries, if you will? Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that most of your revenue is going to come from one or two sources and everything else is just there. And you have to ask yourself, if I got rid of this stuff, would it free up my time? Would it allow me to focus more of my energy on the few things that are working? And if the answer is yes, then it's just about making a decision to do that if that's the direction you want to go. So you're a couple great points I think you made there, uh, challenging people to write down kind of their, if I can call it their inbound pipeline or their, you know, prospect, how they, you know, source prospects. Mm -hmm. And I thought your model was really good. And I don't think in our B2B space that we work in with a lot of technology resellers, enough people use it. And you talked about, could you just review that? You use Facebook, then you go to, can you review kind of how that works? Yeah. So it's a four-step process. So it's a Facebook. So it's like any traffic source or like just choose one. We choose Facebook because it's such a great place to, to acquire leads uh, through paid traffic. So we use Facebook ads. We invite people from the Facebook ad to watch a webinar. Especially in a B2B space, I think it's a great opportunity to really educate your market about how your solution is different than what they might have experienced. So it reduces the, the better you market, the less you have to sell. So this whole pipeline is built to really educate and market your audience to the point where the select few are like, this makes a lot of sense. I want to speak with you guys. 
So it's Facebook ad, webinar. The webinar filters away tire kickers and prospects who are not a good fit, moves the select few who are a good fit to fill out an application, or maybe in your case, book a demo. And then at that point to get on uh, you know, more of a discovery call. I really like that model a lot. I don't think it's used enough in the B2B space. Um, that initial video that kind of, as you said, filters, makes them aware. Um, now, is that a gated uh, video? Meaning, do they have to fill out a form or something to actually watch that? So you're picking up who's kicking tires. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you would, in our case, we're going to, we're going to send people from the Facebook ad, they click on the link and they're going to go to a landing page. The landing page is asking at the minimum for an email, right? Depending on the business, they might ask for a name, phone number, et cetera. And then that uh, the webinar, the master class, the presentation is essentially on the next page. And again, its goal is to reduce the, the unnecessary burden on the sales team of repeating themselves a million times and trying to sell people on your solution as opposed to letting the presentation do most of the belief shifting, if you will, around what's possible in this specific topic area. Mm -hmm. And then you don't even have to, like, our goal is that we want to set up conversations where no one is ever coming to us asking the question, what do you do exactly? Mm -hmm. If someone asks us, what do we do? We're like, cool, watch the presentation. If it resonates yeah. with you, yeah. let me know. We'll jump on the phone. Because if you don't have that, you're having to sell all the time and you're selling from your heels try and, and the prospect is the one being like huh tell me more about this as yeah. opposed to them selling themselves and why your solution's better and then now being able to have more of a dialogue with you about fit as opposed to what exactly do you do and how are you different yeah i mean i, I i'm spending a bit of time with you on this because I, I do think it's a very powerful model you know the benefit if you're a business leader is you're going to standardize or at least have consistency in terms of the presentation, uh, which we all know, you know, if I meet with one salesperson or another person in the company, I may get two different pitches. And often that's a problem. The second thing is uh, the way your model works is it's really going to give you a, a, a better qualified or more knowledgeable uh, prospect, if I could call it, coming out of there. And I think yeah. traditional models I've seen anyway in sales is, you know, you get lead, boom, you hand it to the sales rep and then the sales rep fumbles through or they're very proficient, whatever their uh, skill set is. But uh, I, I know that models work very, very well for you and your clients. And that's why I wanted to kind of drill in on it. So, yeah. you know, as we think about uh, simplicity, again, I really like, you know, I, I challenge our, our viewers or listeners right now to write out, like you said, that flywheel or that timeline, because most have never thought about that, I don't think. And it uh, sounds crazy, but it, they, they don't. It's basic, but... Um, um, any other tips that you would have in terms of, you know, you're a business leader now, you're overwhelmed with, you got to hire people, it's hard to hire people, you've got technology, you know, coming at you in terms of we got to do this, we got to do that, uh, numbers to hit, uh, you know, the odd staff complaint mixed in there. Um, is there a model that you have for that type of simplification? Yeah, so it relates back to the business model, because when you have a clearly defined business model, it almost becomes like a hose. And if you're gardening or, you know, hosing your garden, you make these kinks in the hose that block flow of water. So it's the same thing in business. When, you, when you've identified what that, uh, that timeline of that process looks like, then you can start to, with the support of data, which is very important, is you can know exactly where the kinks in the hose are. So in our type of model, it becomes very simple. It's, I'm not getting enough leads. So cool, that's great. Let's look at the data. What are you paying for a lead from Facebook? Oh, you're paying hundred bucks. What do you think the issue is? Well, the messaging sucks. We fix the messaging. All right, mm -hmm. so you're getting leads coming in. They're watching the master class, but not enough people are booking calls. Mm -hmm. All right, well, why do you think that is? Well, let's have a look at the webinar. It could be the messaging on the front end to begin with. Uh, so it, become, it helps you identify where the issues are in your business. And yeah. then you can go and attack them with all of your energy until you've unkinked the hose at that point. When you unkink the hose here, flow comes through. Yep. And then like with anything else, there will be some more constraints or yep. the next constraint further down the hose. And so it's about identifying where those constraints are. And I think being able to identify the single most important constraint in your business is very, very important because the decisions you make in terms of your strategic planning, right? Like, hey, we're going to do all this stuff. Well, what if you did none of that stuff and you just identified the one bottleneck in your business and you put all of your focus on fixing that? Mm -hmm. It would have a huge impact. So first and foremost is 
Uh, and, I, and again, like I think this is easier the longer you've been in business because you have more experience seeing this stuff or at least work with someone who has the experience who can show you some of it. But if someone thinks their bottleneck is lead generation, that's the umbrella. But what is the real bottleneck that's causing lead gen to be low, mm -hmm. right? Or it's like, hey, I want more traffic to my site or to my offer. It's like, well, if you have a traffic problem, you really have a conversion problem. Because if you didn't have a conversion problem, you can drive as much traffic as you want. Mm -hmm. And so I think being able to identify the number one constraint in any moment and then being able to address it, solve it, mm -hmm. is the most important piece of business growth. Mm -hmm. and, obviously in, and, and obviously in terms of strategic planning and, and what you're going to focus your attention on to simplify your business. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I, I really like uh, what you're saying and what you're doing with your business and helping your clients. Um, I think simplicity is, you know, obvious, but too often we don't do some of the basic things, look for the kinks in the hose and whatnot, like you're saying, we, we just want to go to the next thing and we forget about the core, you know, part there. Now, listen, I, I you said you've been in business 20 years. Is that right? Yeah, close to 20 years now. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm probably 30 some odd, but, and I started with a full head of hair. I don't know about you, but this. I lost my hair when I was 17. So you're ahead okay, of me there. Okay. So <laughs> you may have had a bit of a lead on me there, but uh, anyway, for, uh, I mentioned that because, you know, business isn't easy. And I think your message is, is excellent, you know, for us to rethink what we're doing right now and focus on the priorities and simplify. So I just want to say thanks so much for uh, joining Listen, if someone wants to follow you or engage with you or whatever, what would you suggest there, Yuri? The best place is Instagram. That's where I'm most interactive with our audience. Uh, I'm at healthpreneur on Instagram. So you can follow me there. Hit me up in the DMs if you want. And I'm always posting just, I think, useful stuff. So that's probably the best place. Awesome. I've enjoyed your posts. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today on The Smarketing Show. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of This Marketing Show. If you enjoyed today's show, please like, share, and subscribe to get the latest B2B insights to help you market and sell to win.